You know what segment it is. You know what time it is. Right now, there is not a man in this planet. Fighter of the Night, brother. Okay, brother, this is the fighter of the night, and we could have gone a couple of different ways here, and if you don't mind, I'd like to start first, because I was so, so impressed by my fighter of the night. So, folks, my fighter of the night for Bellator 273 is Saba the Sleek Sheik Hamasi, and the reason why is because this is a man who is known for brutalizing people, knocking their blocks off, knocking their heads off of their shoulders. This is what the man is known for. Went on a recent two-fight skid, not too much of a problem, because this is an individual who always bounces back from adversity. He is 16 and 10 in his MMA career currently, five Five and four in Bellator, and he needed this because he was four and four in Bellator. He was on that cusp of going under 500. You never necessarily want to be there. Either way, man, the interesting thing is that he fought a long dude against Jalil Willis, right? A dude who I thought had just more weapons. That's what I said in the preview show. He got more weapons. He has more variety of attacks. Saab Hamas, he likes to get in there with his boxing. However, this is a dude who's trained by American Top Team, and the one thing that we can't forget is that they have ways to break down their opponents, and that's exactly what he did. He opened the fight with some strong calf kicks. As soon as Jalil Willis switched stance, able to get the shot, able to go in there, arm triangle in the first round, first submission win the man has notched in 2014, his third overall submission win, and I believe his other two submissions were guillotine. So those are chokes, but that's not the same level of jiu-jitsu as an arm triangle choke which is even still very much a wrestling you know tactic more than it is uh, a true you know what I mean somebody pulling guard and trying to do something fancy on you the point that I'm trying to make here man is that being that the sleek sheet can bounce back from adversity time and time again the fact that he blonded out his hair he's this is like the mythical fighter blonde Hamasi we have blonde Brunson in the UFC now we got blonde Hamasi he came in there he smashed he submitted the man that a lot of people didn't think that he would if we're being honest with you uh, Saab Hamasi was a plus 220 underdog with a minus 275 comeback for Jalil Willis. Overall, on paper, Jalil Willis was going to win this fight, but that's what happened. That's what a true champion does, a true competitor does. They say, I don't care what anybody says, I don't care what the paper says, I don't care what any of your math or your logic says, I'm going to come out there and I'm, I'm going to defy it. I'm going to defy the logic and I'm going to get the dub, and that's what Saba Hamasi did. So Saba Hamasi, the sleek sheik, former UFC vet, a dude who's in there taking names, kicking ass in Bellator, man, you are my fighter of the night for Bellator 273. Very impressive showing, man. And who would have thought? If you would have told me uh, the sleek sheik Saba Hamasi by submission, I would have told you you're crazy. And I can almost guarantee the odds on that were probably astronomical. So you are my fighter of the night, brother. But uh, AJ, man, who do you have for your fighter of the night tonight? Cool. Well, first off, Derek, I almost went with Saba Hamasi yeah. just because it was a great fight, man. Homeboy came to party. He was he was rocking the blonde. He looked like a little bit of mullet going on. He was wearing the pit vipers. He looking like a real Chad. It was it was fun to see. And he came out there fighting like he had a chip on his shoulder, Absolutely. bro. He walked up. Even when he circled the octagon for the first one, he was puffing his chest out. It was a great fight. Almost went with Saba Hamasi, so I can see why you went with that choice, man. But my fighter of the night, personally, I'm going a little uh, maybe controversial. Okay. Maybe, you know, depends on how you see it. But I saw a great fighter out there with a great performance. I'm with smooth Benson Henderson, man. He had a little bit of gray in his hair, looking like the old Benson Henderson. Or not, excuse me, not the old Benson Henderson, an older Benson Henderson, but still performed like the young wildcat, man, showing why it is so important to be that cerebral fighter, to know what's going on, to be thinking things through, to know your jiu-jitsu. Against a wrestling guy, we've seen – how wrestling has really taken over the scene, especially with the Sambo and the Russian style smash. Um, but when you get somebody in there who knows the counters, who knows the advantages, who knows how to roll and, and, and shoot for the uh, the takedowns or the leg locks or the, you know, the Granby rolls, all these things, so many different tactics in his book. He proved why it's important to be that cerebral fighter that veteran of the game, the dude who knows it all. And the best part about it, man, he needed this win. He know he needed that win. There was a couple times in there where he looked, he was wide-eyed, like, what, what is going on? This isn't going to be how this fight goes down. He was able to create his own reality and switch things up, make it his fight, man. And that's what I love most about Benson Anderson's fight, this one, man. Very impressive performance from him. Came out, and what I like, too, is at the end of the uh, the the post-fight octagon speech with or uh, interview with uh, Big John, he, he knew. He knew exactly what was going on. He was like, oh, I was doing this, this, this. Should have been like this way, da, da, da. He, you could tell that he is very experienced, very cerebral. And, man, that's that's why I made him my fight of the night. He was thinking things through. He was rolling with it, seeing the moves that his opponent was doing and countering them even better. That's exactly what you want in that kind of chess match fight that we like to see, man. Very impressive fight and a much-needed win for the smooth Benson Henderson. That's why you were my fighter of the night. Very impressive for an old dog like that, man. I mean, controversial, I do think so, you know what I mean? Because we'll talk about it here in a second, brother. But I will say, you're right. He did, He was very cerebral in there. He was very aware of what was going on. And what was interesting is that 
at the end, he was saying that he was like, bro, those Russian boys are strong. He was like, when Mamadev had me in that body lock, he was like, he was a lot stronger than I thought. Um, the big thing that I wanted to take away, though, is at the very end, he saw Habib and he was like, oh, you're the man I wanted to talk to, which is why I was like, Eagle FC approached him, brother. Why you want to talk to Habib so bad? You know, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. That was a great fighter of the night to have, though, man. It's always, like I said, it was just a beautiful thing seeing him co main event, still doing it big, man. You gotta have love for Benson Smooth Henderson. And uh, the interesting stat that I have on this one for him is uh, first one since 2019, he moves to six and two when the fight results in a split decision. <laughs>